Humans want to improve uh, what we have now in our politics. I'm certain that, that both parts of the political system want to improve, but they have different ideas on how to do that. And when the other person doesn't have that idea, then they vilify each other. And that's what began to happen in racquetball and, and certainly happened in paddleball. But paddleball is a, a magnificent game. I wouldn't think paddleball would be as big a prospect for a nationwide explosion as racquetball was because racquetball was so much easier to play uh, at the way it was formed and the way it was in the, let's say, uh, 65 to 74 maybe, it was easy to play. And when it got faster and with glass courts and what have you, then the pro players could play, but the other people didn't enjoy that as much. Every time I speak to anyone about this, when the rally leaves, there's nothing interesting for the people upstairs to watch. They will not watch it. How many times are you gonna watch a kill shot? How many times do you wanna see an ace serve? There was more than just me that knew that that was gonna destroy the sport. And I don't say, I'm not even talking about the manufacturers. They just wanted to make money and they tried to make money, but the way all sports do, they improve the equipment so that last year's stuff is obsolete in the mind of the buyer and they keep getting uh, you know, more and more products sold that way. It's tricky when you begin to take the, the Petri dish that's producing all of this and you, you move it out of the way so you can improve it because you're a manufacturer and you're spending all your time thinking about it. There was a, a really good uh, group of players in the late 60s that were educated, smart, had businesses other than the racket ball and were, knew a lot about life. They were older and what have you. And they taught what they could to the younger players. When I was a younger player, I had those older people help me and do everything they could to make me uh, fit in better and be a more producing member of the racquetball community. But when they died out, literally, it was left with my generation to control the new group that came in. And I don't know if you've ever seen these deals where on the, you watch the, uh, if you can see it on uh, YouTube, on these animal shows, and they have a deal where the, the young elephants that didn't have the big bulls in the park anymore because they had been moved for other reasons, began to kill the rhinos. And they later found out that without the bulls, to keep the youngsters under control so that they could mature into the animals that are supposed to be, that they went this bizarre way of killing the lesser animals. Uh, and it was, it was the same thing that happened with us. When the older people no longer were there to control the path of what was happening, it went, it became more of a, I don't know what, how to describe it. It's, it's more of a kid's game now because it's so simplified and then there's an argument. It's simplified and then there's an argument. <laughs> or they try to come up with a system where there won't be an argument and they double the arguments. I mean, it's a, I mean you put, if you put four linesmen down there, why don't you put eight linesmen down there so you can have eight arguments rather than just the referee? And I'm going, what is going on? Uh, now, that is partly a response to what was happening. When Chuck Levy left the referee's chair, the sport got much more political. Now, I'm not saying that his absence alone was the only cause, but when the players began to think, hey, I'm not getting a fair shake because this guy's playing for such and such company and he's hiring the referees, What's the deal? And all of a sudden they're throwing down a ball that this player plays better with and, and what's going on? And so what happened, instead of people taking the politics out or draining the swamp, you want to call it draining the swamp, instead of draining the swamp, what they did was, hey, 
uh, we're in control now. This bad guy got kicked out of phase one, and now we're in control, and we got the referee. So guess what happened? This other gentleman won five straight when he had just lost five straight with the previous set of referees. Hey, you look at the records, and you tell me how it is that it went like that. There's, I'm sure there's other reasons that might have occurred, but they didn't. And in fact, that's the reason why it went the way it went. And I saw it with my own eyes, and I was one of the victims, and I was one of the people that created the problem in the first place. So I got both ends of the stick, just like we all did. All 20 of us got our, we, there was a time where we got each paddled in the butt for what we had done before. Uh, but what we 20 could have done is if we could have kept the sport the way it was, there wouldn't be no tearing down of courts. There would be building up of courts and they would have figured out how to do the outdoor in a, you know, that could be done everywhere if it was set up right to do it. And they could create the deal so it's not on cement where you're hurting your knees out there if you play for five years. And, and they could have had a big indoor presence uh, with all of these great players over the years. If you want to look at something, they're talking now about the National uh, Baseball League putting in the designated hitter. Now, that is in a small way similar to what happened to our sport, is when they change the sport so you don't have to have a complete game, and you can win just by being a hulking first baseman. You don't have to play in the American League. You just come in and rip the ball. First of all, you emasculate all your records. You make it impossible to follow the path of the players and look back and say, hey, boy, wouldn't it be exciting to see Marty Hogan play Kane in their primes? You know, the game is so different even from when Marty played. I mean, it's just completely different from when he played. I do know that I was at fault. Uh, I will say there's no doubt in my mind that I had enough influence and could have helped influence other people who had even more influence than I did, and I didn't do it. And I was more uh, occupied with, you know, admiring my record or whatever I was doing other than helping the sport. I mean, I did a number of clinics that I think if you could have ever seen me give a clinic, it was an entertaining and an educational deal. But unfortunately, I did it in a way that always rose me up and, ro and denigrated the other 19 players. I did that and I created that atmosphere that was not appropriate. And that was part of the Petri dish, you know, losing what it was. It, it had birthed a wonderful lifetime activity and it ends up in a different position than it should have been. And it was quick. It hasn't changed. Uh, during Kane's lifetime as a great player, I haven't seen any changes at all, except the recognition of the other 19 that are now they're, they can't consider themselves to be real significantly part of the deal because they don't believe they have a chance to win. Unless I'm reading them wrong, I don't think any of them think they're going to win. And where is the game? Where is the excitement? When I watch Kane play, he knows he's going to win. They know he's going to win. The, no referee could save any player. No ball that they threw down there is going to change the outcome. The crowd knows that he's going to win. What are you watching? What are you watching if the other person can't win ever? You tell me, and you tell me how that sport's going to, how that sport can survive at a pro level. It can't. Now, why is it that the people that came after me are just as smart as I am and they're just as, they were 
you know, there's a huge group of thousands and thousands of people that have had a hold on this sport and none of them, not one of them, has taken the effort when they were in the actual melting pot of preserving the Petri dish. None of them, none of us did it. I mean, to feather my own nest, there was a time where I said, look guys, if you do this, the sport's gonna fail. And I did say that. And I said it reasonably loudly when I started losing <laughs> because it was a different game. I hadn't yet been beat at my game. It was called racquetball. And then what they called a new game racquetball and they got a new type of winner that's a, you know, they're great at what they do, but it's a different sport. If you took Kane and you, and he had an older bull that he respected when he came in, and that older bull knew enough about the Petri dish that he knew that, that who's on top in a particular sport is not the most important topic. It's the sport and the life and the Petri dish, dish maintaining its ability to have all of this goodness grow from it he would have adjusted. It's not the players that are going, hey, uh, boy, do I love winning. I don't even know how he can enjoy it. I mean, he doesn't look like he's the kind of guy that's afraid of competition. Does he to you? He, there just isn't any competition because of the way it's set up. And if it was the way it was in the beginning, he would have had a much more glorious uh, campaign throughout his career, in my opinion. If he would have got to do all the things that we got to do, he would have loved it. He would have been as great a player as he is now, but he wouldn't have been part of the group that watched the, pet the Petri dish go under He's been there, he knows it. He has to know it as well as I do. How could he know less? How could he know less than I do? He's a magnificent athlete, great champion. He's got the greatest control of the ball that you'll ever see. But what, what do you get from that if you don't have an underlying theater, if you don't have the drama? No one goes without the drama. 